Hi guys, Tech James here. In this video, I will be showing you guys how to play PlayStation 1 games on your Nintendo Wii using the Wii SXR emulator. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure you have the Homebrew channel installed, then get your Wii's SD card, connect it to your PC, and I will show you guys what to do next. Right guys, so once you're on your computer, I will leave two links in the description of this video. The first link would just be the emulator itself. It's hosted on this GitHub page and all you guys want to do is scroll down and you want to download the latest version by clicking on the Wii SXR Beta 2.3 zip file. So once that has finished downloading, the second link will tell you all of the games um, that work with this emulator. So not every single PlayStation 1 game is compatible. Um, so basically look on this list and just find the game that you're going to use. So I've decided to use Marvel vs Capcom, so I'm just going to scroll down to M and this is the game I'm using, so you just check it aside and this one is completely playable. So once you've downloaded your emulator, go to your PC's downloads folder. Now you will need two other things. You will need a BIOS file and it's actually this one, um, SCPH1001. You can find this on Google very easily if you just type that in. And you will also need a game of your choice. Obviously I can't show you how to download these, but I've just got Marvel vs Capcom. So the first thing we want to do, double click to open the BIOS file folder and just drag that out to your downloads folder. It should be in a bin format as well. And once you've got that, you can delete the zip file. Next thing you want to do is get your game and you actually want to create it into its just own folder. So right click the zip file and just click extract to whatever your game name is and it will put it in a file folder for you. Now the game should have two files in it. It should have a bin file and a Q file. That is all you need um, for the game to work correctly. So once that is done, you can now delete your game's zip file because you will no longer need that. The game should just look exactly like this, just the name and it should have .bin or .q at the end. If you don't have file extensions, right click properties and you'll be able to see it in there. So back on the downloads folder, next we need to sort out the emulator itself. So if you just double click to go onto the zip file, you can very simply just select apps and Wii SXR by holding control and drag and drop these on your Nintendo Wii's SD card. Now once those have copied across, you want to see the Wii SXR folder, open that and you want to drag your game into the ISOs folder. So simply drag and drop that across. Now this might take a while, um, sometimes the games are like quite large in size, I think this one's around 400 megabytes, so I'm just going to give this maybe a minute or two just to complete. Okay, so once your game has finished copying across, we now need to copy the BIOS file, which should be in a bin format. Simply drag and drop that into the Wii's SXR BIOS folder. So that is it. Um, also, if you save the game, they will appear in the saves folder. You can copy across your own saves if you wish to. Um, I just don't have any right now for this game. But it should look exactly like this, very simple. You can leave the game inside a folder and then you should just have BIOS like that. Also, you should just check that it went into your apps folder as well. As you can see, mine did and it's in here correctly. So that is literally it for the computer. Fairly simple, just dragging and dropping across files. Now we can go back onto our Nintendo Wii and I will show you guys how to set this thing up. Okay, so back over on your Nintendo Wii. The first thing we want to do is actually open up the Homebrew channel. So just find it on your home screen and just start it up. Next, just find the emulator, press A on it, and then press A to load it. Alright, so once we're in the emulator, I'm now going to connect my GameCube controller. So for some reason, I can't seem to play the games with my Wii Remote. I don't know if that's just me, or maybe it's just the whole emulator. So my GameCube controller is actually connected right now. And what I'm going to do is just use that. So I'm going to scroll down to settings and just press on A. Now once you're in the settings, you want to scroll over and just press A on input. You want to go on the top option, which is configure input, and just press on X. Next, I'm going to switch it to manual, and it's going to say that my um, both my GameCube and Wii controller are connected. If you wish to remove your Wii controller, just press A on it until it goes on to none. 
just make sure this um, is set to 2 as well and then press B to go back. Next you will need to change the PlayStation controller type. Um, to get mine working I had to switch this to analog. Disable rumble I'm going to do yes and I'm going to leave that and auto load slot I'm going to leave that on default. Uh, we've also got video up here you can change some video options if you wish maybe leave FPS on. We've also got audio uh, I'll just leave this because audio seems to be working fine. We have also got a saves tab um, where you can save your game saves onto the SD card. Just make sure SD is selected if you wish to have it as that. And then we've obviously just got general and it just has some kind of like normal stuff on there. So just going to press B just to go back. Now we want to go up to load ISO and just press A. Next you want to select load from SD. Now I actually had to change over to Crash Bandicoot. I tested out that game that I was using. Um, Capcom and it just kept on crashing. I'm not sure if it was the emulator's fault or the ISO's fault but it kept on freezing on the boot screen so I managed to get Crash Bandicoot instead just for this video. Um, it's just a bin file so I'm just going to press A on it and then press A on OK and it will load it. Next we can just scroll down to where it says play game and just press A. Now the PlayStation 1 game is going to load. As you can see we have FPS at the top of the screen and roughly it always runs at 60 FPS. So we get a good solid gameplay on a Crash Bandicoot. Now I would test other games but just for this video just to keep it short and um, this is pretty much just the setup. I'll just be showing you guys um, me loading up Crash Bandicoot. So as you guys can hear this sound fully works. Um, it might be a bit quiet actually but there's no like sound glitches or anything like that. And then obviously we're on the Crash Bandicoot main menu. So yeah, really good emulator. Um, it's actually pretty cool. We can just start the game. And yeah, I was actually really impressed with this emulator. So that is pretty much it for this video. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.